Welcome to Visionaries, where we explore stories, strategies, and insights from the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs, brands, and creators. We're on a mission to help visionaries like you stand out and monetize their knowledge, influence, and message online. Exploring topics like business, marketing, creativity, and personal development. Let's build your vision for a happier, more meaningful life, business, and community together. Today, I'm talking with Samantha Lee Wright. Samantha is not only a master of her own platform, but a passionate teacher of the podcasting medium itself, leading the next generation of podcasters into the future with clarity and confidence. She mentors new podcasters on their journey with her No Holds Barred online course, Pineapple Podcast Academy, the online training program which helps dozens of new creators start and grow their podcast from scratch. Today, we explore what it looks like to live life as a visionary on your own terms and also a little bit more about her program. So let's dive in. Sam, it's so good to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Dallin. You've, you've built such a beautiful community here. Your show is just like, it's just a very sweet show. I, Thank I really you. love it. Thank you so much. Well, I mean, true to the name of visionaries, I love to feature people like you who really are looking to build a business and a life that speaks to your own personal vision of like what you want your life to look like, your family life, and of course, your professional life. You know, a lot of us are building businesses from home, very virtual. And so um, as we get into talking more about what that looks like for you, I would love for you to share a little bit more about your story and basically what brought you to where you are today. Sure. So my story really has started since I was a young adult. I've always been a little bit, a little bit hippie and a little bit tech geek. So a little bit of both. And you have for a, a many of the years growing up in my kind of early adulthood, I became really, really fascinated with kind of two things at the same time. One was um, health and wellness, holistic health, in a sense of really taking charge of your own health. I just got so fascinated with the idea of like, wow, like I can learn about herbs and this and do this and make these decisions to keep my body healthy. And then I also became really fascinated with like financial autonomy as well. Like, oh man, maybe I don't have to work a nine to five my whole life and not have bosses my whole life. Maybe there's a way that I can, I don't know, be, I didn't even really understand the word entrepreneur, but that's what I kind of saw and was like, oh, that's, that's a possibility because I guess I've always been a little stubborn and in the fact that I, I'm, I love to work, but I never really liked working for other people. So I really love a sense of autonomy. And to me, that really equates to sustainability as well, to be in charge of my own life in all aspects. And so when you're kind of stubborn like that, becoming an entrepreneur is, is almost your only option, <laughs> right? To do that. There's no so, other option. Uh, yeah. Yeah, really. So fast forward, um, my husband and I, we became pregnant with my first son. Um, and then two years later, pregnant with my daughter now. And, and that really threw a wrench in a lot of things, a beautiful wrench, let's call it, because we were not very prepared for that career wise. You know, I had been doing um, side gigs. I'd been working as a childbirth educator and a dual. I really, I had no real career to speak of or sense of, wow, how am I going to raise a family, you know, it takes money <laughs> to raise a family. Wow. Okay. We got to really do something about this. And we were, we were poor. I mean, we were struggling. We were a family of four living on $17,000 a year. We were on food stamps, hitting up food banks and, you know, something had to give, something had to change. And kind of at the same time, my friend introduced me to um, her business she was doing, which was an essential oil MLM business. And I became one of those moms, you know, I'm just one of those oily moms now in the carpool lane, smelling like patchouli, seeing like who wants to host an oil class? You know, I'm one of those now. And, and that I did that for a year and I was really good at it. And I loved it because I loved just interacting with different people, but it did get, it get, got very tiring after a while. And finally I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta find time, find a way to be home more with my kids, no more going out to teach classes at night. And no more, you know, on the phone constantly. Like, I want to be home. And I had this light bulb moment of starting a podcast to serve my 
my health and wellness business that I was building at the time, because I looked, that was one of the first places I went as a, as just a consumer. When I started getting into essential oils, I was like, well, I want to learn more about these. I went to podcasts and I looked up essential oils and there was a couple shows on, but none of them were really taking it to a level that I wanted as a consumer. And so I was like, well, maybe I could start that podcast. You know, I think that's one of the most powerful thoughts that anyone can have is to ask themselves, why not me, you know, to see what other people are doing and ask yourself, well, why, why couldn't I do that? And so I had that thought and I really couldn't shake it. And after lots of sleepless nights and lots of brainstorming and deciding, I I finally launched um, my podcast, which is a very niche podcast about essential oils. And, um, and the rest is history We're 5 million downloads later, it's still thriving and making a sustainable income for my family. Um, and now I've been able to take that experience and turn it into an online course where I now get to help other aspiring podcasters, you know, hopefully do the same. That's an incredible story. And I feel like it, it's, it resonates so much with a lot of us entrepreneurs out here who are excuse me, looking for more of that autonomy. I mean, you know, for, for you, right. It was like, you guys kind of your family faced a moment that you're like, Hey, I want to be able to have more autonomy and work, you know, to have more time with my family. And of course, like, you know, from food stamps and other elements, there's kind of like that, that moment of decision to see like what more can happen in order to make these changes. Um, what would you say in creating this autonomy and building this very successful podcast, um, what do you see now as like what you're looking to do and take into the future, right? You have your program, you have this successful podcast, like what, what do you think is next for you? Yeah, I think where I'm at right now, honestly, if I can just stay here for a while, I'd be so content because right now, Dallin, my life is awesome. Like I'm living the best life. I work four hours a week on my podcast. I work another maybe five hours a week on uh, my podcast Academy that I serve students with. And then the rest of the time, I really get to spend time with my family, with my friends. I've learned to really outsource as much of the parts of my business that I can so that I can stay in my zone of genius, doing interviews like this, teaching my students, answering questions for people in the academy, recording interviews for my podcast, and then the rest is kind of taken care of. And for me at where I'm at right now, I've got two young kids, I've got a husband that I love, I've got a great friend circle. You know, I kind of tell myself every day, I'm like, all right, how long can I keep this up? Cause this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like the fact that you answered in that way, I feel like is, is, is a little unexpected, but also a breath of fresh air. And, and here's my reason why is most entrepreneurs out there would be like, well, I'm going to go build out this hundred person team, or I'm going to go make these multiple, you know, like these multi-million dollar decisions over here. But then it's like, well, guess what? Like you are in a place that your business is su- successful and that you are so content with how you, what you've done to build your life that like that is at the end of the day, what is I think most essential is the stuff that's less like less about the financial ga- gain or the accolades in that big way more of like, hey, I've got like, I'm not, I don't have to work crazy amount of hours, you know, you know, 80 plus hours a week hustle. And I can focus on living in the moment and having time to actually be with my family and and living true to what you're talking about early on too, right. Is this idea of autonomy of your time, of your finances. And, and so I love that response. And that was like, I wasn't expecting that entirely. Right. Like, and, and I, that's something that I am aspiring to, um, is more of that, that's like, you can still be successful yet have a simple form of accomplishment that doesn't right. always align to all these other entrepreneurs out there that are like yeah. kind of shoving other ideas um, and definitions. Well, that's of the culture. You know, I think we live yeah. in that culture where we're constantly told, you know, keep on improving, keep on improving, not good enough yet. Not good. Like keep, how can we grow? We're, we're in this 
this society of constant growth, which isn't necessarily a bad thing all the time, but it's not for everyone either. And so I think, you know, it kind of comes down to your intentions. Me, the intention of me starting a business has always been self-sustainability. I'm, I'm not going to lie and tell you, I'm one of those entrepreneurs that wanted to like change the world forever. You know, I don't really consider myself uh, smart enough to change the world. Honestly, (laughs) I'm like, but I can figure this out enough to at least support my family and do it in a way that I'm, I love, you know, I love my job. I love my work. I do feel like I'm making a positive impact. I'm supporting companies that I believe in that are doing good. You know, I get to do a lot of good in my business, but I think we all need to sometimes pause and ask ourselves, okay, am I am I growing for the sake of just growing or is this something that I really need to do? And I might feel totally different, you know, in 10 years when my kids are grown and they don't, you know, want to spend time with me anymore and they're off to college and, you know, maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll have a light bulb moment and go, oh man, I feel really drawn to this cause, you know, and I'm going to fix it and I'm going to build another business. And, um, but yeah, kind of back to my first answer, I'm so content right now and I love it. That's so good. You know, and Something you said there um, rang true to a quote I may butcher, but I feel like there's this quote somewhere that I've heard that if you want to change the world, go home and change yourself or change your home or change mm-hmm. your family. And, and I think so many people don't recognize that opportunity, that that whole idea, you know, maybe it's that the Miss America pageant type, like, you know, what do you want? World peace or right. you know, solve world hunger. And those causes are, are amazing, of course, mm-hmm. but oftentimes the, not the easiest, but the more straight path for changing a world is changing your own world first. Like, you know, doing internal work, external work, like, you know, your health and expanding that to your family and what you can do to your family. And I feel like that then spreads to your community that spreads to that community spreads to a broader, you know, community to statewide, nationwide and beyond. So yeah, I, I don't think a lot of enough people give credit to the personal to family work that should be focused on first before they go off and try to change the world through the way that they define it. So um, mm-hmm. that that perspective you shared is completely relatable and I feel like relevant to many of us who are listening and watching. I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, um, tell us a little bit more about this program um, with, with helping people start a podcast from scratch. Uh, what does that look like? And oftentimes, like what types of people do you find who are wanting to get this kind of help? Like describe those people to us too. Yeah. So my, my academy, it's called Pineapple Podcast Academy. It's really for anyone who has ever thought to themselves, ooh, that would make a really good podcast. And we can start with just that one simple idea or for the, maybe the small business owner or the entrepreneur who's like, man, everyone's saying I should start a podcast and they're not quite sure what that would even look like. Um, or people who just really appreciate the platform. We, we, we take total beginners and we walk them through how to really define that core concept, defining what your podcast is going to be about who's it for, who's going to listen, and then just hold your hand every step of the way of getting that up and running. Um, I I focus in on the art of podcasting because as a avid fan, I've been a true fan of podcasting for many, many, many years, even before I was a podcaster myself. To me, it's just the most beautiful platform on the planet. I think there's nothing that can beat it. Um, You know, when I have to come on camera for interviews like this, I'm like, oh, no, I got to go on camera because I love being able to just turn on a microphone and hit record and send a message out into the universe and connect with people from all over the world. I have people listening to my podcast from practically every country that can get podcasts, can get access to it. And that's an amazing feeling. And um, I think there's so much creativity that can be put into podcasting as, as a medium itself. We are just scratching the surface of what's possible in podcasting. If you think about all the other mediums out there, like film, music, television, um, those, those genres have been around for a very long time, for centuries, uh, or some of them for centuries. And podcasting has only been around for like a decade, you know, and so but, but radio imagine... has been around for much longer, which I think is well, kind of that's a true, but 
radio is not radio is a precursor, but radio is not on demand. Radio is not on demand. And that's a huge difference, you know, to, and radio is, is like ongoing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. There's, there's like a gate between. So there's just so much that, that can be done with podcasting. And it's, it's such an honor to be able to take people through. And I've, I've had 14 year olds take my course. I've had 70 year olds take my course, you know, and, and everyone in between entrepreneurs or total beginners, people who've never even, you know, run a business. And they just have this idea. Like I have one student in my course who she is a second generation farmer and she, she has inherited a farm, her family, you know, her, her dad's passing away. You know, the, the farm is going to the next generation and she doesn't know what to do. She's like her and her siblings are like, I I don't know how to run a farm. Like, what are, what are we going to do? And so she wants to start a podcast about finding solutions to that because it's not just her. There's many, many families across uh, America, especially where there's this kind of farming crisis happening where this second generation of, of farmers are coming in going, what do we do? Like, we have no idea how to do this. And um, so, you know, she's not in it for the money. She's not in it for uh, starting the business. She just is in it to really find solutions and to help other people that are in her shoes as well. Um, and I've got, um, musicians taking my course who have created a podcast where they interview different indie musicians and they sing songs at the end of it too. So it really all over the place. Um, and that's one thing I really pride myself on as a, a teacher of the podcast medium is helping, helping people think outside the box a little bit and not put themselves in this, Oh, podcasts have to be like this one thing where I, interview someone or do, you know, do this. I like to kind of open people's minds and make them realize it can really be anything you can experiment. You can get a little weird and, uh, and that it's, it's such an accessible platform for anyone to start if they have an idea or a a story to share. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I love about that too, is that you're not just servicing those who are in it for the money. I think a lot of people jump into podcasts to say, thinking like, this is going to become my business now, or this is going to fuel this venture. And I, you know, talk about those, uh, those students who are farmers, as an example, is it's part of it is finding solutions. Part of it is building a community. Maybe they monetize it down the road, but knowing what your purpose is behind having a podcast as, as your medium of choice, I think is a powerful thing to establish because not everyone needs to go off and make tons of money. Part of it is like, people just want to share positive messages with the world. And, and I would agree too, although I'm very biased about video, audio is an essential part of video and is just a central part of our way of receiving messages. And mm-hmm. the cool thing about that, you know, with, with your focus and just the importance of audio in our lives is that we hear a lot more audio experiences than we hear uh, motion picture, you know, video experiences. And I think of something like Alexa, or other devices like that that are often now in our home and working to support us in other ways, you know, like technology that exists, having access to like, those are audio experiences and we can listen to those passively. And there's just a lot of opportunities that um, having your message heard through the audio form is, uh, is so important. I can't imagine watching mm-hmm. silent films um, just not, yeah. not as exciting without the audio experience. Yeah, exactly. I guess the same could be same for the visual experience too. Do you ever listen to a podcast? Um, uh, oh, I just forgot the name of it. You should probably just cut that out <laughs> anyway, but it's all about, it's all about the uh, sound. And they did an episode about films for blind people. And so they have like an audio track that goes with the film that explains what's happening visually on the film the whole time. It's oh really yeah. Interesting. Well, that's a real thing. Or like you, there's a lot more compliance happening now too with ADA, like audio, Mm -hmm. visual, you know, visually impaired and where you have to describe the visuals of what's being seen. I also think of um, whether it's, I mean, I did a lot of audiobooks when I was younger uh, and I still do with like, um, you know, uh, Audible, but there are a lot of books out there that actually have sound effects that go along with the reading of the books. I think of something like Lord of the Rings where you're hearing voices, voice actors for all these different characters in audiobook form. Um, and you also have the sounds of like the hoofs of the horses or the swords clashing. And, uh, 
And I, but you also think of like how audio is in like podcasting is inserted um, in other types of media too. Um, when you're talking about it early on, I thought of this new show my wife and I have enjoyed with Steve Martin and Martin Short with Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. I don't know if you've heard of that show. Um, I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? Yeah, it, it's it's pretty fun. Like it's it's all kind of based around this idea that they are massive podcast enthusiasts about like this true crime podcast and they go off and create their own. And so it's kind of built around that, but yet it's built around a, like a crime within the story that they're trying to solve through this podcast oh, that they started. Funny, that's um, funny. And then, I mean, there's even a moment like, which I thought it was hilarious as like a podcaster myself or like a cons- consumer myself. Uh, Tina Fey is like, she plays this character who's this wildly popular podcaster and her voice like, so, like uh, very soothingly wraps up one of the episodes and she's talking and sharing this message. And then the episode you think ends, there's this pause in her voice. And she's like, this episode was brought to you by Squarespace. And then she goes off and it was completely unrelated to the episode, but it's so funny because it's so true. The podcast world of people who are adding in their sponsors, especially Squarespace sponsors. So right, <laughs> kind of digress down, but like, I think, I think it's just so amazing that it's becoming a part of the zeitgeist for sure. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So where can people learn more about this program um, and take part? Sure. Uh, at pineapplepodcasting.com. You can find more information about the Academy. And if you're someone who's just sort of dipping their toe in the water and like, yeah, I'm thinking maybe I want to start a podcast and just want to kind of get an overview of the basics. I've got a free workshop up that walks you through, you know, microphone, what kind of equipment to use, how to use it properly, which people don't talk about enough. People are always like, here's, here's the podcast mic you should buy, but they don't teach people how to actually use it properly, which is just a little pet peeve of mine. So I walk people through that and um, help them kind of walk through a little exercise to solidify the, their idea. And that free workshop is the same place, pineapplepodcasting.com. Perfect. We'll definitely include that information down below. Uh, thank you so much, Sam, for joining. And uh, we look forward to, I look forward to talking to you more in the future. Awesome. It's going to be great. Thank you so much, Dal, and thanks for having me.